Hello dear students and parents. Today I have brought a surprising thing for you. Guess what? Hold your breath. Today I am not going to present any topic before you. But my students are going to present topic of their own choice from lesson number 6. Classification of plants. This lesson after I taught them during the online session. I told them to make videos on the topic of their choice. And to my surprise, the videos which they have sent me are really amazing. Much better than my expectations. And that's why I really appreciate the efforts put forth by them. Wonderful. Also, from the bottom of my heart, I thank all the parents who have supported their children in video making process. So please bless all my students with your valuable feedback so that they can boost their confidence and inspire others as well. Thank you so much. And here are my students presenting before you the topics from lesson number 6, classification of plants. Hello everyone, my name is Aisha Asit Women. So today we are going to see monocot and dicot plant. Flowering plant known as angiosperms are the most diverse group of the land plant in the planet. The angiosperms spread across the world with at least 260,000 living species classified into 453 families. Traditionally, flowering plants have been divided into two major groups or classes on the basis of cotton they don't have present in the seeds. These two major groups are known as monocot and dicot. Cotyledon is a central portion of the seed embryo to which the epicotyl and radical are attached. Seeds that are monocot have one cotyledon and the dicot have two cotyledons. To gain a better understanding of these various features, we will now study two plants, one are monocot and the other are dicot. To do the experiment, we will require a orchid plant which is a monocot and a hibiscus plant which is a dicot. Procedure Ensure that both the plants you have taken have stem, leaves and flowers. Starting at the leaves of the both the plant carefully by observing the venation. In our case, the venation of the orchid leaf is parallel. So it is a monocot and the venation of the hibiscus plant is the reticulate. So it is a dicot. If the leaves have a stalk, then it is a dicot. And if the leaves have no stalk, it is a monocot. Let's see the stem. If you carefully observe the stem of both the plants, you will see the orchid plant has weak stem, whereas the hibiscus has a strong stem. Let's now carefully observe the flowers. If you count the numbers of petals and sepals, you will find the monocot flowers have numbers of parts that are divisible by 3 and the dicot flowers have numbers of parts which are divisible by 4 or 5. this observation, we can conclude that the orchid is a monocot and the hibiscus is a dicot. Hi friends, how are you? Hope you all are fine. I am Aliza Maimon from 9th A and today we are going to learn about cryptograms. So let's get started with this topic. So what do we mean by cryptograms? At higher level of plant classification, different characteristics are considered such as cryptograms and phanerograms. But here we are only going to learn about Cryptograms. Cryptograms are respectively divided into three divisions, which are known as Thallophyta, Bryophyta, and Pteridophyta. So let us learn deeply about the following. The first division is Thallophyta. In this division, the plants are exclusively aquatic, which means they grow in water. These plants do not have uh, roots stems, leaves or flowers means they are not well differentiated into uh, roots and stems and uh, all the parts of a plant. And also they do not have conducting tissues. Conducting tissues means uh, they conduct food and water to all the parts of the plant. The Thallophyta division plants uh, reproduce in the formation of spores. Now let us move further. The next division is Bryophyta. This division is called as the amphibian of the plant kingdom. 
because the the pl uh, the plant mainly grow uh, near moist soil or muddy puddle these plants are thalloid multicellular and autotrophic they reproduce in the form of spores the structure of their plant body is ribbon like long and do not they do not have true roots leaves or stems instead they have a uh, root like uh, rhizoids or uh, leaf like parts or stem like now, let us move further to our third and last uh, division which is pteridophyta now uh, in this division the plants are well developed and well differentiated into roots stems and leaves and they also reproduce spores uh, formed on the back posterior of their leaves pteridophyta has a well developed conducting system now friends we are done with our topic cryptograms hope i'll see you soon and uh, we'll meet again Till that, stay safe and wear a mask. Goodbye. Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing well. My name is Kasinti Guri, and in today's video, I'm gonna explain and give you some information on monopods and dicots. So without any further ado, let's just jump into this video. Monopods and dicots show the difference in the features of root, stems, leaves, flowers, and seeds. First point that is roots. Monopods roots are fibrous roots. and dicot roots are tap roots monocot roots have fibrous root system and dicots have tap root system monocot stem do not have branches and dicot stem have branches this is the coconut tree monocot they do not have branches this is the neem tree dicot they have branches leaves of monocot are long narrow without petiole and parallel venation Leaves of dicot are short and wild with petiole and reticular venation. Onion flowers are small in size, white in color and borne in groups and bajra flowers are also small in size and borne in group. Coconut flowers are also so having same features. Monocot flowers are trimerous floral pods are usually 3 or multiples of 3. This is a dicot flower. This one is also a dicot flower with this case. Dicot flowers are colorful, large in size, born in single and with petals. This one is also a dicot flower. Dicot flowers are pentamerous, floral pods are usually 5 or multiples of 5. I just taken two plates in which I have separated the monocot seeds and the dicot seeds. So in this plate I have the monocot seeds like rice then wheat and teal seeds monocot seed just have one cotyledon present in it in this plate I have the dicot seeds like gram groundnut peas etc I'll just open this groundnut and show it to you so the groundnuts have two cotyledons I'll open this pea So the peas have two cotyledons. So the dicot seeds have two cotyledons present in it. I am Maria Hussain Maru, studying in Standard Ninth, Anand Ashram English High School, Palghar. Today I would be talking about classification of plants. There are two types: cryptograms and phanerograms, and they are further divided into thallophyta, bryophyta, pteridophyta. and gymnosperms and angiosperms the presence or absence of organs is the first criteria for classification of plants the presence or absence of conducting tissue for conduction of water and food is the next consideration for classification do the plants bear seeds if they do then whether the seeds are enclosed in a fruit or not is also an important criteria for classification finally plants are grouped depending upon the numbers of cotyledons in the seeds 